Once again, you already know what it is, and you already know where you have reached the number one collaborative professional wrestling podcast, not just in America, anywhere in the world, anywhere on the planet, anywhere in the in the stratosphere, the ionosphere. This is Everything Pro Wrestling and Hubbard Wrestling Weekly presents Clash of the By God podcast. We're really fired up. Uh, to uh, bring you this most recent episode. A lot of stuff going on in the world of professional wrestling. We see that the chat is already lit. And, uh, you know, we appreciate you guys being here. Quills is here. Clown is here. Jesse's here. Deanna's here. And Leezy's here. Guy Will Gamble's here. Everybody's here, man. We appreciate you. Ray, I see you. XG Dub, I see you. Everybody's in the building for another big time episode of The Clash. So let's get to it right away. Conrad, my brother from another, drop that. Another week. I'm off today. I'm off. Another week. Another day of pro wrestling. It's Monday. You know what that means. We got Raw coming up tonight. We're going to be talking some SmackDown things happening. Season premieres galore this week in the world of WWE. Um, in a day that I thought wouldn't be super news filled, I thought this is going to be kind of a like, you know, normal. We go through the motions podcast. Mm -hmm. Then it starts to unravel. Things start to happen. Um, and it's all good. Easiest ways to support the podcast. Number one, hit like on the video. Easy, super free. It's fun. Share it with a friend is another thing we would greatly appreciate. Leaving us comments, subscribing, all those things are good for us. Leaving us a five-star review on each of our selective podcasts. Uh, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to listen. You could probably find everything Pro Wrestling, Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. And uh, needless to say... Needless to say, we also accept Super Chat. So if you want to jump right to the top and get in on the conversation, please feel free to uh, slap down that Super Chat. We greatly appreciate those as well. Um, Sean, I'm kicking it to you, man. Uh, I know you gave the shout-outs early on. We, we're a little behind, so we're going to just uh, jump here and get right into the uh, the deal. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it. Just want to let everybody know that the uh, Snap Famous t-shirts are now, now available on uh, hwweekly.threadless.com. And to eat or not to eat t-shirt is now available on hwweekly.threadless.com. Those are both Clash of the Podcast merch items, so make sure you support the brand. We would love to see you guys. We've seen Clown. We've seen a couple people online rocking our merch. Um, Ray, so please, please, when you, take, when you get something from us, it's not a lot of money going our pocket. We just get a kick out of seeing you guys rock our stuff because that means you like us, care about us, and support the brand so plug it on social media and let's have some more fun shout out to ori and bj who have joined us mckinney now in the house as well uh gabe and i'd be reminisced if i didn't bring up um darth vader mufasa 100 uh james earl jones uh r.i.p great actor probably the voice of a lot of our childhoods that are in this chat so uh thank you for that Jocelyn, I see you have also joined the chat. Thank you so much. Uh, finished that pay-per-view when I got off. Who child? <laughs> we'll be child. talking about that, too. T-Ferg, welcome, man. Welcome, welcome. What up, fellas? I appreciate you, T-Ferg. Thank you what so up? much, man. No. Um, we're jumping into this, Sean. Uh, you want to do? want to talk Cody? Yeah, let's, let's get right into it, man. Adrenaline oh, in my soul. Something, something, Cody Rhodes. He doesn't have adrenaline in his soul. Come on now. Come on now. I'm a, I need you. I need fair Sean for Cody tonight. I need I've fair been, Sean. I've been doing good, man. I'm I'm not I'm I'm not gonna disappoint you, bro. I'm gonna keep it fair. Okay. Cody and Solo, they were announced for SmackDown. This is kind of a SmackDown recap, but at the same time, we're going to get into it. Cody was announced to have this segment with Solo Sokoa, and he just jumps right to a bloodline. Come on out here. And a match has been made. Um, 
Cody Cody also taunted uh, Jacob Fatu a little bit. They know what people want. They're teasing you at this point. Like, ah, nah, not Jacob. I love you, Solo. I love you. That was actually really good, by the way. Listen I could to you. I, I could really yell it, but I, I won't. That was excellent, man. That was almost as good as my uh, Kevin Hart or my Triple H. Cage match announced. Um, we're getting a lot of cage matches in pro wrestling. Cody Rhodes, Solo Sokoa, next week on the WWE Week on USA. Next Friday, Undisputed Championship Steel Cage match. How you feeling about this? Sir? First of all, WWE Week is that's that's corny. Is uh, I never like just shut up about WWE Week. Like, like who cares? Like, well, you know, that, that's probably the channels though. That's yeah, probably big, USA. Big deal. Who cares? That's stupid. Um, look, let's let's call a spade a spade, man. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I think Cody Rhodes has been very corny as champion. That doesn't mean I don't think he's a good champion. That doesn't mean he's not a deserving champion. He deserves to be world champion. I love it for him. I love it for his family. But I think his championship reign, for whatever reason you may want to come up with, lack of opponents, lack of good stories, maybe kissing too many babies and making them cry, kissing too many girls and making them cry, whatever the case may be, I think that we are going to look back on this rivalry with Solo Sokoa unfavorably. And I think that the only way to pull it out is to have a magnificent cage match on Friday night. The issue is this. Number one, the parameters of what we can see on USA are nowhere near the parameters of what we can see on pay-per-view. Hence what we're going to talk about a little bit when it comes to uh, the main event of All Out. However, you can put on a good cage match on television. We've seen it before. We'll possibly see it again. All I'm saying, Conrad and chat, is that Cody and Solo need to put on on this match. Now, we already know who's going to win. Duh. Right? I mean, hashtag no surprise. Hashtag uh, predictable, right? But you can put on a match that's f- f- predictable and still make it quality television, right? So what I'm my challenge to WWE writers, Paul Levesque, is to give us something that we don't expect. We don't necessarily need open chair shots. We don't necessarily need cinder blocks, but we need something to make this be remembered for something more than just a filler waiting for Roman Reigns to to come back, which he which he will on third on our Friday, and he will interfere in this match, and he will cost Solo the match, and it will lead to Solo versus. Roman Reigns at Bad Blood, but I digress <laughs> because once again, hashtag predictable, but I'm just saying, I don't want it to be a situation which it looks like it's going to be right now where this rivalry looks back is just a filler rivalry because right now, Conrad, as I throw it back to you, that's what it is. Um, You're not wrong in anything that you've said. Um. <sighs> I'm trying to think of how I described how I felt with this. I, I I feel like we regurgitate the same points when it comes to SmackDown. SmackDown is the worst show in all of the WWE shows. I'm sorry to say it. I would rather watch NXT at this point. And a year ago, I don't think me and Sean felt like that. At least I know I didn't. Right. Now, now I'm like, nah, I'm good on SmackDown. I could skip it. Um, if there's anything else that's willing to catch my attention, if there's a great college football game on, if there's anything else to do, I'm pretty sure I would find a way to do that instead. Um, and, and I do try to catch SmackDown, whether it's the highlights or watching it live, but it, it's just tough what you did to this roster. Um, going back to it, and I want to just jump to these little points real quick here, if you don't mind. Bailey. You've done an incredible job at making Bailey feel meh. Meh. Um, how, do you spell, how do you spell meh, by the way? I just want to make sure. M-E-H. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. A little fun, little fun tidbit. And I, I was like, M- I think it's M-E-H. <laughs> yeah, just meh. There you I, just, go. I just, uh, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> Tiffany Strat's got the money in the bank. We know what we're waiting for with that. You're waiting for the yes. cash in. Hashtag, Bailey is- hashtag predictable again, but go ahead. I will still, I'm going to say it just so that everyone knows predictability is not bad. Let me tell you something, Conrad, as I let you, I want to let you finish. 
you're not wrong. And I, I don't think I've ever said that on this show before. As re, I've said you're not wrong many times. I've said you're right about many things. But as far as the predictability, that's the first time I'm, I'm admitting on our show, you're not wrong. But the problem is WWE's predictability is lame. But go ahead. I'm sorry, bro. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing I think we can agree on, and I want everyone to hear this too. Predictability is not bad. It could be boring. That I've always said it's not bad. Mm-hmm. People, when people are like, "Oh, it's bad because it's predictable," don't. That's how you get Russo. Don't. Don't get. That's. Mm-hmm. Let's swerve him, bro. Let's do a swerve right. for a swerve. Right, right, right. Hey, coach, how you doing? Want to do a podcast with me? More on that later. Don't get me started on those two right now. Right, right. Um, but we just talked about that. Now, sometimes you could do something unpredictable and it's bad. Exhibit A. I have been asking, where is Giovanni Vinci? Him and Lou Witt Kaiser could be lighting up the tag division right now. Instead, they broke him off from Imperium. I'm like, okay, they must have plans. I see vignettes. No offense to anybody. I don't believe in vignettes. Cedric Alexander, anybody? Ashanti the Adonis, the new tag team? Oh, they're on NXT now. I don't care about vignettes. Until you're on TV, it doesn't matter. They had him lose. In what what would you say? Ten seconds to Apollo Crews? Uh, well, seven, eight seconds, yep. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. He's cooked. Like, I don't know where else to go from this. You got kicked out your group, you came to SmackDown and you got beaten 10 seconds. Maybe this is a gimmick. I'm hoping that they have a plan for this, but I'm worried. I'm worried to say the least. I don't know if you you're have not, any thoughts on that. No, you're not wrong. You're hundred percent right. And I, I understand why you are worried because there's a reason to worry. He's a great talent, in my opinion. Another person, I'm like, ah, pretty underrated. I think I would use this guy. I'm not saying world champion before anyone starts screaming that. Conrad said make him the world. I'm not even saying make him the U.S. or intercontinental champ. I think he could be in the tag division, though. Mm -hmm. He could be doing something. Him and Ludwig Kaiser are proving themselves. And here's your main event that happened on SmackDown. You got basically everyone in the bloodline right now. uh, Those tag team title pictures are incorrect, by the way. Absolutely. Uh, (laughs) um, But... This is what we got the Street Profits and DIY doing. You know what I mean? They're they're taking the bumps for, for the homies so that Cody can get back to that match. And that's that's where I was getting back to. We're getting back to Cody and Solo here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of one of those people want this to be over with. And I saw them getting a lot of praise for like, ah, you know what? Let's just get this thing over with, and then we don't have to worry about it at Bad Blood. So is Cody not wrestling at Bad Blood? Is this Orton turn happening sooner than we thought? Um, Where do you go from here, Sean? We try and knock out. Where do we go from here? Meaning if I work for WWE, we we try and knock out as good of a cage match as humanly possible. We try and make this mad rivalry somewhat salvageable. And we move on to Roman Reigns and Solo and Bad Blood, hoping that we don't look back on this rivalry as wasting our time for the last, essentially, five months. Yeah. I mean, Cody's got to do the moonsault off the cage, right? He needs something. You know, I, I would even take I would, I would take a flaming table. I mean, it is USA. It's not Fox. So it, it's not Fox. So there's a little bit more wiggle room. Um, a smidge more wiggle room. Let's not go too crazy, but I would take a flaming table. I would take a regular table. I would take a chair shot or two. I would take blood. I would take something that would make it again, memorable. This cage match is almost like the lifeline to the rivalry. We all know it's the culmination of what's going to happen next. We all know Roman's coming back, right? So what we have to figure out is what can we do as an organization which is something that we haven't done for quite some time, which is to make the predictable mean something. Ooh, that was good. Let's make the predictable mean something. We all know Solo will not be the next undisputed champion. We all know that Cody Rhodes is going to win this match. We also know that Roman Reigns is probably going to be the reason that Cody Rhodes wins this match. Let's do something to make it not be something that everybody sees coming from a mile away. Because I'll predict the way the match is going to go right now. Solo's going to climb the cage. Solo's going to be about halfway up the cage. They're straddling the top of the cage. All of a sudden, Roman Reigns music is going to hit. Roman Reigns is going to beat up all the members of the bloodline. Or the only difference, maybe Paul Heyman comes back with Roman Reigns and says, while, while Solo is climbing the cage, uh, uh, 
my name is Paul Heyman. You, you know, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. Something along those lines. It interrupts Solo's climb to the top of the cage or interrupts the pin in the middle of the room, in the middle of the cage. Roman interferes. Cody escapes or gets the pin. One, two, three, or escape. Cody wins. Now, if I can do that from here on a Monday, five days out, don't you think people who get paid to do it should bring us something a little bit better? Interesting. I'm, I'm going to the chat because I see some uh, interesting comments here. Deanna has, I don't know if it's the lack of stronger rivals, but um, yeah, the, the draft's always been a problem in my opinion. Ray comes in. WWE cage matches are usually uh, free TV. Uh, usually good, but I'd rather have him move on from solo at this point. Uh, I, I hear you. Where, where do you think that rivalry? I know we we put this on the sheet too to talk about. Where does this rivalry like fit into? Um, How are we going to look back on it when it's all said and done? Yeah, like is this is this going to be a bump in the road for Solo? Is, it, I think it affects Solo more than Cody. I think Cody is untouchable at this point, despite my um, my claims of cornyism. That's not a word, but it works. Um, despite my claims of cornyism, I think Cody is still untouchable. You're right. I think Solo Sokoa, you know what this rivalry is going to be? The legacy of this rivalry is going to be the time that Solo stepped up to the main roster and it, I mean, excuse me, stepped up to the main event and it didn't work. And that's a shame because you know something? That's the same guy that all he had to do was cross the ring from Roman to the Usos and got a standing ovation. That's the same guy that had NXT in an uproar when he was the North American champion. But yet, that's the same guy that's wearing red belts and black suits with no socks, acting like he's the tribal chief when everybody knows he's not. I have an idea to save Solo if it came down to it. This is like the uh, pull the fire alarm. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the short of it. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I've been thinking about it. If you pick the right moment to do this, sure, you could have Sammy help the bloodline at this moment, you know, go up against Solo. But when it's time for the turn to happen, I would have Jacob Fatu turn on Solo. Like, you have failed too many times. I'm taking over now. And then Solo has nowhere to go. Sammy's like, you know what? I got drafted back to another show. I want Solo to have my spot. What? What? I want Solo to have my spot. And Solo, you know, after weeks of trying to get into it and redeem himself, Sammy gives it to Solo. I think people would then get back on board with him. You could push him at a mid-card level, and then you could get him back to that world title picture where he needs to go. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. What you're talking about is a redemption project, and I'm I'm cool with redemption projects. Um, It's just, to me, it's heartbreaking because on a much, and I'm not going into it, I'm not going into it. It's similar to Jay Uso on a slightly smaller scale. Solo was over, over last summer. Over, 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 over. And now not so much. So it is, it's kind of like a rebuild. Yeah, don't push him too fast. And that's the problem sometimes with NXT. He had just got the North American Championship, then you took it from him. Then you were like, go up here he was the quiet strong silent type but now you're giving him a mic like well now you're a main eventer you need to talk all the time you have completely changed what people are expecting for him right right um ray brings up some classic cage matches here cena edge batista taker punk cardi or any christian and i would add and i would add batista oh you did add batista I, I appreciate that i apologize ray you added batista taker with the um the mark henry interference and the edge cash in it was pretty awesome so i agree with you um, go ahead. I'm going to let you read a couple of these. Now will gamble in the building. says, outside of Hayes Andrade, every other week I'm cool on SmackDown. You're not alone, man. Um, it's one of those things, man. M, Lazy, Foe, Cheesy. I'm going to say what he would have said. Hello. Good evening. I'm sure he did earlier in the night. He said, I didn't watch SmackDown on Friday. I watched Collision. I'm not mad at you, bro. I'm not mad at you. I think Collision's been stepping up a little bit. M, Lazy also says, WWE equals Meh and predictability. I agree. 
M. Leezy continues saying, hell, predictability with some of the outcomes of AEW, but they are exciting. There you go. That's a good point. Now, I was just talking about how I don't like predictability. Conrad was saying he does like predictability if it's done well. And we agree on the fact that predictability done well can lead to quality television. That was AEW over the weekend. I agree. Uh, he brings up redemption story as well here. Mm-hmm. Um. Who else do we have? My here? guy Derek, I see you, my guy Derek. I appreciate you. Oh, my bad, D. I'm way up top still here. Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good. Um, Deanna says, "Does anyone know why Kiana James was moved from the roster today?" Sean, speculate. Uh, I'll put it to you like this: Over are the days that we think it's a mistake, and what I mean by that is. Over are the days when we say, you know what, maybe it's just like a glitch or something is wrong. I didn't hear anything. If she's off the roster, that means something happened. I have no privy information to what possibly has happened, but if it's the if she's not on the active roster, something happened. And I'm sure we'll hear about it real soon. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Don't don't speculate, bro. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing here. Um it's weird that somebody is doing what they used to get mad when it was done to them. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Um, Got to have better plans for these folks. I, You knew what Kiana James' gimmick was when you got her there. What happened, dude? What happened? This is the thing I fear for, like, Chase U, many of the other NXT talents where I'm like, uh... Conrad, as I strategically pour my non-alcoholic drink without the label showing because we don't have the sponsorship yet. What have I been saying since day one, brother? I've been saying the grass is not always greener. I understand WWE is the biggest wrestling organization in the world, but there are times when you just need to be satisfied where you are. When you make the jump, WWE has already made it clear, unless you're Ronda Rousey, unless you're Jay Cargill, and maybe a few select others, I don't care how many world titles you've won. I don't care how much notoriety you have. I don't care what kind of reputation you have. You will be on NXT. And if NXT has been universally recognized, no pun intended, as the developmental brand of world wrestling entertainment, what does that say about how they feel about you. I'm not saying don't take a call from Paul Levesque. I'm not saying don't take a call from Bruce Pritchard. I'm saying when they say to you, hey, we want to bring you in, former multi-time Ring of Honor champion, former multi-time New Japan Pro Wrestling champion, former multi-time TNA champion, former multi-time MLW champion, when they say we want to bring you in and start you on NXT, I'm just saying, take a breath and think about it. Because if they're saying they're developmental and they're saying you need to start in their developmental, what does that say about how they feel about you? And if you believe the rumors about the pay, Uh you shouldn't mess with that. Sorry, I'm getting echo on uh, the back end here. But yeah, you're hearing echo from my end? Yeah. Okay. Let me let me re, let me revamp. Uh, going back here to who is it? Uh, guy will gamble. Let me jump back to you. Uh, he says, "Shouldn't Vincey at least have beef with Ludwig?" You would think, bro, but they made that switch and did it. Uh, nobody cares about Cody and Solo. Bobby Fish status. Jeez Louise. USA has a Chucky TV show. They can do a flaming table spot. That is true. That is very true. Um, let's see here. Going back into it. Um, where was I in the comments here? Um, and we're trying to resolve that echo issue real quick, guys. Sorry about that. Um, Bugging. Uh, McKinney said, I'm glad they're putting matches on TV uh, just because this feud ain't feud and Solo should lose clean and decisively and let Cody move on to another thing. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that would be good if they could get to that level to move on. 
Um, <laughs> he says, so TK gets grief for his booking. Do you ever uh, get to a world title match and are like, let's do this. Let's get by this to the next thing. Or is it that a game exclusive <laughs> Tokyo? What's good, man. Appreciate you being in here. Um, this will go down as one of Cody's weakest title feuds, the solo. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Um, I don't, I don't see the lie. Yeah. Let me see here. Clown says, I think the moment Roman got to the Ulafala uh, on for more than two seconds, Jape is, is going to get the puppy eyes for Roman and will turn on Solo. See, I think you Jacob's better by himself. The key is the match that people want is Jacob versus Roman. Jacob versus Cody. Those are the matches I think people want to see. I'm with it. Uh, Tokyo said, Will Ospreay, you're NXT. Come on now. Tokyo. Tokyo, see, that's what I'm. <laughs> you, that's what he's saying. What I'm saying, he's right. saying what I'm saying. And un, I mean, imagine, imagine. Not that that's gonna happen, but imagine he goes to WWE and they start him on NXT. I mean, at that point, all bets are off. Yeah, I, if if you're definitely about your business, get your money, man. That's why I didn't understand if anybody was really hating on someone's contract, like. I don't know. Get the money, bro. Be better. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Right. Uh, uh, yo, Kiana probably got caught in the Chase Bank glitch because she's sitting back doing nothing, so she needed some extra. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Kiana James. I, I would like to see her on TV more. You gave her two chances. Is that really enough to evaluate someone? What a revolutionary idea. <laughs> Sh- shirts incoming. The, um, uh, what, what's her name from? Oh, here we go. Uh Maxine Dupree. No, no, I no. I, okay, okay. She, okay. She's done well. I want to give her yes. a compliment. Shout out me. to Maxine Dupree. Yeah. But how is Maxine Dupree getting more TV time in the ring than Kiana James? Facts. I don't get it. That's just me talking. Uh, how how do snakes make phone calls without arms? Come on, E. You got to chill. No, I'm not mad at E for that comment because I know where I know where that comes from. Yeah, yeah. No lie. Um, Joel, I see your two dollars super chat here. Do you think there was too much violence on Saturday? I mean, he super chatted, Sean. We could jump to it for a second, but I still want to go back to WWE. Yeah. Um, um, what, your thoughts? Ugh. This is a double-edged sword, kind of. I it have is. thoughts on both sides of it. Well, let me start by saying I thought that AEW All Out was 10 times better than All Out last year, and I think that they really put on. For a pay-per-view that came two weeks after All In, I think they did their thing. Um. I thought the match was great, talking about the main event cage match, Swerve and Page. There's a lot of things that happened. A lot of things. A lot, a lot of things. I could have done without the needle. That's just a personal preference. That's just a personal outlook. I'm saying I love the match. I'm saying they put on. I'm saying it was five stars. All I'm saying is that I could have done without the needle. Are you afraid of needles? No, no, no. I'm not afraid of needles. I'm just saying, as it relates to what the symbolism is, I, I could have done. That's the only thing I'll, I'll partially criticize. Um, as it relates to, because there was another elephant in the room, which was the Daniel Bryan uh, situation with John Moxley, that was a little uncomfortable as well, um, especially how long the bag was over his head. I have no problem pushing the envelope, but you have to be careful. You know I'm a big AEW fan. Just be careful. You don't want unpopular press to come because at this point, unpopular press can cripple that company. We don't need that. It's going to come anyway, though. Right. Hashtag legentil activity. I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. The, The bad press people were out. You know what? I'm gonna save it. Let's put a pin in this. Yeah, we're, we're, this was this was part of our rundown. So yeah, yeah, yeah we'll get back into it because yeah. I do have something I really want to say about that, and then that's probably what me and Sean are gonna flip the script on you guys. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to Cody here for a second. Uh, punk rock musician, uh, Wesley Esold. I'm hoping I said his name I'll right. Give, I'll, give, I'll give you a break if you want. Go ahead. All right, because you shouldn't have to always do it, bro. Got to give you a break. I'm, we're tag team partners, my brother. 
All right, so uh, punk rock musician Wesley S. Fold uh, filed a lawsuit on Wednesday against Cody Rhodes, WWE, and Fanatics, alleging trademark infringement, breach of contract, and intentional interference with contractual relations. S. Fold claims Rhodes, WWE, and Fanatics violated an agreement in uh, relation to the American Nightmare trademark. In addition to recovering attorney fees, S. Fold is seeking damages of at least $150,000 as well as a tremble, well as tremble damages of up to $300,000. Tremble, right? Tremble? Treble, treble, excuse me, guys. Treble damages up to $300,000 relating to federal trademark infringement. And that is as per, Conrad, help me out. Post Wrestling and Brandon Thurston. There you go. Um... So I kind of read through what his complaint was. I did not want to put Cody's real name and stuff up here, but I could have. There was a little screenshot of the front of it. Um, going by what he's claiming, mm-hmm. and I know you know Jesse Cody Rhodes fans in the chat please don't get <laughs> mad at me. Right. It looks like they may have violated if what he's saying is true. Y'all violated with the Pharaoh shirts and stuff that just says American Nightmare, but. That's for a judge to decide, not us. But sounds like there's some troubling things coming towards uh, Cody right now with the payout for that. Unless WWE is going to eat the cost for him. I don't know what the relationship is on that as well. Maybe they're making it. He's like, you eat the cost. You made the stuff improperly. So you didn't follow the rules that I told you was in place. I I don't know how that's going to work. Had this been two years ago, I'd say yes, WWE would have put it on them. But I think with the popularity of Cody Rhodes... Um, I think WWE would take that L and, 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 and do what they have to do. My question would be, then what happens to the music? Uh, I don't think the music's an issue. I think it's just dealing with merchandise and things like that. And okay. I, listen, I don't know who knows this guy's band. It's called American Nightmare. He's probably had it before. I know people are like, well, Dustin was calling himself that before. I get it, but Dustin maybe didn't trademark it. Old school pro wrestling, they didn't do that stuff all the time. It was just right, taking it. Yeah, and I'm selling some shirts. Beat it, buddy. Yes, sir. Um, it, it, it just depends, man. Um, yeah, we'll see. You don't have uh, a genuine in your soul. <laughs> I'm going right here. Uh, big Cody fans right here. Uh, Rob says WWE lawyers are going to drag this out for years and make dude drain all his resources to the point it gets dropped on a technicality. No, I, no I do not like that. Um, Joel says WWE lawyers over – Robbie and his nonsense. Um, I mean, I think Joel is partially correct. I think WWE lawyers will prevail, but I don't think this is nonsense. <laughs> um, wait a minute now. Hold on. This is the see. Now I got to go against Derek here. Hold on here. Uh-oh. I will defend Cody today. He had that name for a long time. You all of a sudden want money. Shut up, Derek. He had the name first before yeah, Cody first. did. That's the key. You you got to look at the time frame. That's like tomorrow. Someone starts up the new clash of the podcast. Let's just right. say, and it's ten years later. You can say that all you want. You could be like, "But we have a million followers, Conrad. You owe me and Sean some money." You, you fact, know what I mean? If fact, we filed the first, the matter is the only difference is that this. Well, not really difference. The actual similarity is that there's content that proves this. Like there's this is not just hearsay. Like they can produce evidence on record, on film, on YouTube, on whatever in their archives to show we did it first. Right. Um, McKinney says that uh, he's going to get cashed out. WWE did violate with seventy five percent of the image has to be bigger than the words on the merch. Yes. If you read the context of what it was, that's one hundred percent what it is. Yes, sir. And Rob says it ain't nonsense. Dude has a legitimate gripe, but he's jumping into a shark tank, is what he's saying. And Someone's I think what Rob, I think what Rob is saying is what I was saying in response to Joel. Um, Rob, help me out. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think what Rob is saying is that, oh, it's a legitimate case, but you're going up against a giant. Right. And this is where the corporate world is unfair. This is the exactly. stuff that Sean talk about. Exactly. It's not fair. Derek says, I don't care. Closed mouth doesn't get fed. Derek, he told him the moment he saw Cody apply for it, he said, that's cool. I'll let you use it. But he got paid already. And he said, these are the rules. 
Right. Please right. don't use just the name. Like if you're on it, that's fine. You're imaging your brand, you're Cody Rhodes. That's fine. Right. But when they violated it, you violated the agreement you already had with this guy. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And Rob says you are 100 percent Sean. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Uh, Clown says, big question is, does Cody have to cover up that neck tattoo logo? <laughs> big question. No. <laughs> we, we could all only wish. I, I never liked when he got that tattoo. When I first saw it, I was like, please tell me that's one of those, the the ones you yeah. put water on and peel. Yeah. Please. Yeah. When I saw, when I figured, when I found out it was real, it was like, oh, that's a bit much. Derek, this what do you say? Somebody, this is from somebody that has a lot of ink, but on, like, you know, I think my ink is in, it's not on my neck. I have a job, people. <laughs> Hold on. I'm yelling at Derek. He said he. Who is he? Pronouns, pal. <laughs> um, now, Gomez, lawyer, shark, retired when he got us. A... All right. I'm out, E. Come on. Oh, e was talking goodness. wild. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure, like I said, me and Sean will be viewing this and then deciding if we're going to cover this. Ugh. It's going to be a toughie. But I, it depends on, look, again. Can I can I make a little bit of a, a an analogy here? Go ahead. Comparison. The we talked about this briefly. I want to go a little bit more into detail. The New York Giants Hard Knocks, presented by HBO. It was executive produced by the New York Giants. Therefore, there's not going to be much that the Gi- matter of fact, I take that back. Everything. There's not going to be anything that the New York Giants on that show are not going to have to approve first. I'll tell you this, the New York Giants, and I'm getting somewhere, Conrad, take this ride with me. The New York Giants must not have done a good job executive producing it because all because the clip that they showed with Joe Shane, the, the general manager, and the conversation he had with Saquon Barkley, where Saquon Barkley ended up leaving, it's being blasted all over the place considering the fact, and I'm a Giant fan, I can say that, that our $40 million quarterback stinks, and Saquon Barkley just rushed for 100 yards in Philly and caught three and had three touchdowns. My point in bringing that up is this. Do we really think that a Netflix special about Vince McMahon that is going to appear on the network that they just signed a multi-billion dollar deal with to have their Monday show, is it really going to reveal a whole lot? It might reveal some, but I I have my doubts. You're not going to see, and this is me being completely facetious, you're not going to see McMahon, I'm saying this for entertainment purposes, creeping into a laundry room with one of his employees. You're not going to see that. There's not going to be that kind of massive groundbreaking footage they just signed a deal with netflix like how 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 are we expecting anything groundbreaking out of this documentary i did hear it's a double burial and this is coming from john pollock and thurston who have seen it already they said it's people in the company are not happy that vince is getting buried but you took his side in this so that's Mm. on you that's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, me and Sean will probably watch it. Maybe we'll do an in-depth analysis. We'll, we'll talk about it. I'm sure yeah. you guys will hear our thoughts either way. Um, by the way, uh, what's up? With, everyone's burning that jersey, man. Those- Daniel, look, let me tell you something. You know how I talk about Triple H? You know how I insinuate? No, no, hold on. And out of respect for A, you, and B, our show, there are certain words I won't say, but there are certain things about – Triple H, that there's some question marks about. Well, I'll put it to you like this, man. Up until this summer, who was the best player undoubtedly on the New York Giants? Without question. Like, who was the undeniably best player on the New York Giants until this past offseason? Daniel Jones. Yeah, whatever. Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley, right? They should have never got – I don't know why they got – him, bro. Now, no, but, it's, but it's not just listen i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna move on because it pisses me off as a giant fan and guys you tell me what you think too you won't give saquon 12 and a half or 13 but you'll give daniel jones 40 let's get back to the show <laughs> big bronson we got uh him and uh Seth making their return here. Sean, how do we book Seth Rollins to come back, brother? Oh, Chad, same man. question for you. 
Well, first of all, let's hope they continue the momentum with Brunson Reed and get well soon because the reports, I believe, are true about him having COVID. Um, it's going to be hard, man, because I would imagine Seth Rollins would be looking for Brunson Reed. Um, but does that mean that Seth Rollins has been demoted to mid-card or does that mean that Brunson Reed's been promoted to main, to, to, to main, main, uh, that main event? But I will uh, – look, let's, let's just focus. Seth Rollins, to me, is, a, is an A-plus player. He'll always be macho man to coin the um, or copy the phrase that my my tag team partner Conrad Cushman has always said. He's always going to be macho man, and I mean that in a complimentary way. But it's unfortunate because when we say going to be macho man, that means he's one of the best to ever do it, but always unfortunately second fiddle. I hope he comes back to a hero's welcome. I hope he comes back and immediately immerses himself in the world championship picture. If he has to make a roadblock along the way with Brunson Reed, I hope that this is Brunson Reed's first loss on his ascent to bigger and better things. Just because you lose doesn't mean you can't continue to grow. And if I were booking WWE, it would be Seth Rollins versus Brunson Reed at Bad Blood. I, I don't know if Seth's ready to come back. It sounds like he was still banged up. Um, that's going to be really tough to decide. I don't think this is a step down for him. I think I see this as a roadblock, a necessary roadblock mm -hmm. to get to it because I think then after Seth is rid of this feud, I think Punk's going to get a roadblock. Who that is is the question. Right. I think their, their WrestleMania is planned. No one gets hurt. Everything is good. We got a plan. Um, should be good. Matt is saying the thing that I've been hoping for from the beginning. I hope Seth Rollins comes back serious. He's so much better when he's in there with Punk and it's serious. So much like that is top tier player Seth Rollins. That's what I like from him. I got none of this. No, ah! you were doing that when you got splashed six times. Don't do that now. I don't want to see you dancing. <laughs> I want to see heads getting stomped. He's so freaking cool, bro. He's so freaking cool. Like, that dude, okay. Okay. No, I'm just saying, which version do you like better of him, though? I'm not, like I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm oh. just saying he's so freaking cool, man. Like, I don't want him to lose that swagger. That is not but, the fashion police that you hear? Yeah, that is, uh, <laughs> no, that was perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean. Maybe it is the fashion police. Maybe, maybe it is. But listen, do you really like the Seth Rollins that was twirling his, twirling the belt around his head and paired up with Becky Lynch? Like, that was corny. No, he reached a level of corniness. But my my thing with Seth is how, are, how do you put this together to be main event? The gimmick that he has where he comes out and he's kind of being goofy, that's fine when you're at, like, the low – like, when they, he was doing the U.S. Not, title stuff. He's not being goofy. This incarnation of Seth Rollins is not goofy. When he look, Seth was Seth Rollins goofy when he was cursing out CM Punk in Survivor Series last year. No, was Seth Rollins was Seth Rollins goofy when he was cursing out Drew McIntyre and CM Punk three weeks ago. No, but he can still be. Oh, that's what makes. See, this is the problem. This oh 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 stuff, which I love, and a lot of people don't. You don't love it. My my guy Derek doesn't love it. That's what makes when he gets angry better. You see what I'm saying? When he when he doesn't come out, oh, and he's angry, we appreciate it more. I was sick and tired of seeing him twirl the belt over his head and feud with Brock Lesnar. That was boring. Every single week, the same thing. The Triple H feud was crap. Complete crap. To be fair, this was Hunter... To me, Hunter Hunter's prime is oh two thousand to oh one, but you know what I'm saying. It was way overdue at that I point. Do. I do. I'm just saying. Give me. You know what? Here's a good one. Give me hybrid Seth. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. I'll, as long as he knows when to turn it on and when to turn it off, I guess it's better. But you get what I'm saying. I don't want to see you in no promo for WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> like what? What are you doing, bro? <laughs> Like okay, don't do that. Don't where do did that. that. Where did that come from? The cackling is just I can't. I can't <laughs> with it. If you smell 
like imagine doing oh, that in front of the rock. Wait imagine, a minute. Imagine if the rock heard that. He's he ain't going for this. <laughs> bye bye. Remember we said bye bye. <laughs> Now, with Riddle, he did a good job. That was one, see? Now, that's one I'll give him props for. Right. Are the cameras still rolling? <laughs> Is it because your wife? And I was like, oh. Yo, that was gangster, right? That was gangster, but he was still o o o But it was fresh. But we know who gets the credit for that, right? Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just pointing it out. When it's good, it was this guy. When it was bad, oh, it had to be him. It had to be. Um. Byron Cutler like 2014 to 2018. I, I do love me some shield, Seth. Um, I got a, I got a question for you. Go ahead. Chat too. What's better? <laughs> or <laughs> give me the million dollar man, ten out of ten, <laughs> all day. Fair enough. Seth Fair is gangster on Twitter saying we don't need punk uh, was great, but when he gets under the lights, he's the Joker and it's corny. I hear you. Uh, the cackles and a classic Rollins. LOL. Seth has come to uh, this is from McKinney. Seth has come out super serious to cut a great promo and his recovery to get back to the ring and how Reed almost took everything from him with six splashes and he wants revenge. It's a simple, effective storyline that happened when we were kids, Sean. This is Earthquake. This mm-hmm. is Earthquake. You remember where were you when Earthquake sat on Damien? I was sitting in front of my television and sitting Indian style right in front of my TV with popcorn. I remember. Just, but you have to understand, five year old me, five year old me, is not thirty eight year old me. To me, thirty eight year old me, that's corny. It was clearly not a real snake. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Kyron. I'm sorry to let the let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean the pantyhose. Out there of the you bag go. With hamburger there you me go. In them. There you go. <laughs> I love that he was on. Uh, what was what was the show with Vince McMahon and Bobby Heenan, and then where they were in the studio? Um, prime time. Prime time. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And over the years, you get confused when he came out with the Quake Burgers and they were eating them, and then you. I know. I know that was Gomez's idea. And then it yeah. Was, God. Dude, what are you doing giving people stuff like this, Rob? Bobby Heat is like, this is pretty good. I don't, right. I don't know. Right. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. We got people saying DiBiase all day. Conrad's cackling sounds like something off Tiny Tunes of Animaniacs. Poor Damien. <laughs> <laughs> he said, take it back, Hubs. Take no. it back about the snake. <laughs> <laughs> it turns Seth Rollins heel. Um, I, I'm indifferent if he's oh, in face. I think he's. Pirate. I think he's great at both. I think no, I like him as the anti-hero, man. This, mm, I, I think he can pull off both, though. He's good at okay. both. I mean, clearly I'm in the minority. You, Byron, uh, McKinney, my guy Derek. Nobody likes Seth Rollins like that. I like Seth Rollins. I don't have an issue with Seth. It's just sometimes how it's presented, like I said. That's that's it. But it's been better. Quake Burgers could use a little pepper. That's wrong. Yay! <laughs> I know the reference. Good Lord. Man, you know what though? That food was looking good that night though. When boss, I was like, Stop "Man, it. boss man's getting a five course meal." Stop it! Uh, is Seth WWE's Will Osprey or is it Gunther? Um, I will say he is for WWE, like on that level Seth, of he, WWE's. Will, no, because Will Osprey is the undisputed best wrestler in AEW. <laughs> Quote Sean Hubbard. Um, mm-hmm. No, but I think he means is he their best bout machine? Is he the guy who you go to when you want to have a good match? Who oh. do you turn to? Is it Gunther or is it Seth? Um, Gunther's not going to let you down either, but if I had to pick one, I'd pick Seth. Seth's the baby face that you're like, yeah, let him go out. Let him cook. Let him just do what he's going to do. Facts. Boss man in the late 90s was a menace. Yeah, don't let him read poetry at your poetry slam. Uh, Yo, I, guess- I, got, I, got an I got an interesting outlook on Boss Man in the 90s. Shout out to EZ. Boss Man was a punk in the 90s. How you, <laughs> let, <laughs> how you let nails just walk in off the street, bro? And just beat you like you stole something. Like he beat Boss Man like he stole something. He was getting big Boss Man was a punk. All Big Boss Man cared about was the fact that Bobby Heenan talked about his mom and that he could never beat Mr. Perfect for the Intercontinental Belt. Boss Man was a punk. First off, I like that storyline with don't talk about my mama. He he was giving Heenan those uppercuts. The um 
Boss Man was just preparing himself for WCW Boss Man life. After Big Bubba Rogers, it was over. Guardian Angel and all, it was over. <laughs> Boss Man was getting beatings in the NWO yes, on a weekly. Was. Yes, he was. And then he finally joined them like he was cool coming out with the coat. I'm like, you lame. Get out of here. Yo, between him, IRS, and the Giant, bro. And I, I, there's a quote that you made a couple weeks back when we were talking about the NWO. It doesn't matter how many cigarettes the Giant smoked. It was not working. <laughs> You are still a big, goofy dummy. You are not fitting in. You know what? I'm surprised Hogan fit in because Hogan actually gave, we realize now, you know, whatever. He actually gave the essence of being cool. Like Hogan Hogan was able to fake it till he made it. Giant wasn't going to be able to do that. Yeah, Giant's not cool. He's just supposed to slam people. There you go. Uh, McKinney said the audacity of you, Sean. Damien <laughs> had to have a stunt double. Quake was reckless. <laughs> Yo, I remember watching that. Like I said, that's five or six year old me. And I was like, this is bad. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. But then I looked at it like, I actually looked at that clip recently. I was like, that clearly, that clearly was not even close to being a snake. And then he opened, then Jake Robert. First of all, the same guy. This is how stupid it is. Stupid in an awesome way. The same guy who ended up ruining Macho Man and Elizabeth's wedding is in the ring crying his eyes out <laughs> when Damien gets squashed. You know what? You deserve everything you got, Jake Roberts. You have been a menace to the World Wrestling Federation for your whole life. And you finally got what was coming to you. First of all, Bobby Heenan was right. You know, there's no reason for a python to be anywhere near the ring. You weren't man enough to face Andre the Giant without Damien because you knew that you needed a foreign object, or in this case, a foreign animal, to even get into the same ring with Andre the Giant. Okay? And then you bring in a reptile to even the odds. Jesse the Body Ventura was right. Bobby the Brain Heenan was right. Jake Roberts got exactly what he deserved. I think Earthquake, God rest his soul. I'm a big fan of the shark. <laughs> 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 yes. Well, we got we to gotta do bad gimmicks again one day. Me and oh, Sean have a field day. Uh, Malik Murray says, I feel Swerve can do that too. Absolutely. Swerve is oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah. More on him in a second. Jocelyn says, Osprey is the best until him and Ricochet go. Listen, mm. fire, fire. Go slow. Go slow. Lead up to that match. Um, more on that momentarily. Nail served that man for hard, that hard time. He sure did. He sure did. And I'll tell you one more thing that grown man Sean wouldn't have said as a child. The wrong guy won at Survivor Series. Nail should have won that nightstick match. <laughs> this is wrong. I ordered that. Please don't bring that up. That's my second pay-per-view I ever ordered. As a kid. That was my first non-WrestleMania pay-per-view. There you go. There you go. Quake burgers over pepper. Please stop. Boss man was that heel of the Attitude Era. Um, boss man, when Boss man was in the was in the Twin Towers, Boss man was something nice. I like Boss. Boss man and the King was one of the greatest tag teams. They should have won the belts, man. Nah, man, they beat the Rockers at WrestleMania Five. I wanted to. I was mad. I was real Yo, mad. Akeem the African Dream and the Big Boss man had no business being partners, but it worked like a charm. Big shout out to the Slickster, man. What a great team the Twin Towers was. <laughs> Slick was making moves. You know what? In my top five tag teams, maybe even higher if I think about it longer, in my top five tag teams to never win the belts. The Rockers, mm. being, num the Rockers being number one. But the Twin Towers, I think, should have been tag team champions. Rockers had the belts. I got photo proof. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't count. It didn't count, though. Honestly, I kind of was hoping him they would uh, get a run in 05, but you know why that wasn't going to happen. No, as, wait, you, what kind of run are you talking about? You thought they'd be like... Oh, give, the, give them the tag belts, I said. Really? For what nostalgia is? purposes? Okay, I'm not mad at you. You're not really big on nostalgia, though. I love nostalgia. When is no, what I'm gonna, no, you, you always say, you preach, you, I, I'm quoting you, you say nostalgia with a purpose. Here's the reason. Okay. You don't need La Resistance running around with the tag title. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much. Did they really need it? Oh, that was great. Crime time. Yeah, they got to be on the list, too. 
Hey, whoa, whoa. I love prime time. God bless you, Chad. Rest in peace. One of the top five tag teams of all time to never be champions. I right. love you. You know you're a witness to the fact that I love Crime Time. I'm just asking the question. You think Crime Time is one of the top five teams of all time to never be tag team champions? I think I can make an argument for them, possibly. Okay, okay, okay. Listen. If you think Trevor Murdoch and Lance K never deserved an L, hey. Well, they should have beat Jericho, but they didn't at SummerSlam. There were many opportunities mm-hmm. for them to be the tag champs, in my opinion. Big shout out to um, Malik Murray, and he's also saying Enzo and Ke- Again, Malik, guys, guy will gamble as well. All time is a long time. The Rockers, I think, are the universally recognized greatest tag team to never win the belts. Okay, there's no. I would like to. I would like to think my team of the Twin Towers would also be on that list. Crime Time. I love crime, maybe the top ten. You know what? That's something we'll think about. That's something we'll think about. The greatest tag teams of all time to never be tag team champions. For sure. And I think Enzo and Big Cass would have got it at WrestleMania 33 if the Hardys didn't come back. Logan James, welcome. Appreciate you. He said no Renee Dupree slander. Jesse laughing at us. What's good, Jesse? Yo, I haven't thrown any links in here yet either. By the way, we have a Discord. If you guys want to uh, pop on in, you can see some uh, good stuff in there from us. And Pro Wrestling Shoots, Jesse, they have a show going on. They usually go live on Tuesdays. Make sure you guys subscribe to them too and show them some love. 100, 100. Um. Yeah, and that's good now too. I'm just gonna tell oh, you on here. Cool, cool. We're we're having private discussions about uh the background things that <laughs> about are happening. My horrible show. microphone. <laughs> let's get back into. Let's talk all out. Yeah, we didn't get Sean's thoughts on this. I I did a whole review. If you guys want to listen to me and Derek for an hour, feel just free. do me a, do me a big solid and leave that up, bro. Because I'm gonna run it right right here and now. The World Tag Team Championship match I thought was a joke. Should have never been booked. Uh, there was no way that Castagnoli and Yuta were going to win. They came out, they fought well because they're excellent tag team, but I don't think that match was properly booked. I thought. That, wait, 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 wait. Are you blaming the Bucks for what happened in the match, or do you think it was just not a good match, period? I think it, I think it's the elites, or, oh my goodness, I'm about to say a yeah. word that I hate. Uh-huh. It's, it's their aura, it's what's surrounding them. Uh-huh. Like, it's their, when I see them, I don't want to see these guys in suits. Mm-hmm. I don't care. But I love Claudio and Yuta as a tag team, if that makes sense. Like, there was some redeeming qualities in the match. Where I was like, I love Claudio and Yuta. I hate this match. I would say that it's one of those matches. And as a matter of fact, the only match of the evening where when it was announced, I was like, ugh. Like, there was no care, right? Like, you don't exactly. care about the match. It wasn't exactly. bad. It was just. It I wasn't a bad match because I don't think those four guys could have a bad match. But the the the, the, the match itself, the scheduled match, did, did nothing for me with the obvious predictable outcome. MJF versus Garcia, I thought was brilliant. What did the right guy win? I don't necessarily think so. But I think that Garcia getting his come up at the end and getting the pile driver off the top rope was awesome. Um, please hashtag please don't die. Um, you know, but they 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 put on. They definitely put on. Osprey and, and Pop. What can you say other than outstanding, top tier? Mercedes Monet, stop hating on the on her. She is awesome. Don't I? And I'm not gonna renege on what I've already said. I'm not gonna go back on and double talk. I do not like this current incarnation of. <laughs> I don't like this current incarnation of Mercedes Monet, but she is still one of the top five female wrestlers on the planet, and she definitely put on in this match. I like the fact that she did it alone. It adds to her credibility. Willow and Statlander, both stocks went up. Outstanding. I am thoroughly impressed. Go ahead, bro. I want to add a boost to this. Yes. They went on after a match of the year contender with yes. Pack and Will Ospreay. That match should be in contention for match of the year as well, I think. Because you went out there when people were like, nah, whatever. It's just Chris Statlander and Willow. No, they put on. They put on big time. They they did their thing. They did their thing. Statlander's credit has gone up, and Willow's has been up and is staying up. The fatal four-way or four-way dance for the Continental Championship, clearly a filler match, but all guys stepped up. I'm getting more and more respect every day for Briscoe. Never did not have respect for him, but I'm gaining more and more every day. I think we might need to tweak 
Orange Cassidy's character a little bit, getting a little lame in my opinion. After all these years, I think the whole half thumbs up and the I don't care and from wherever, how much, whatever, 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 I think we need to add a little sauce to that. But other than that, and Okada is one of the best in the world. You're not the first person I heard say that. Mm -hmm. And I want to add this. Do you see Okada Takeshka as being a big match? I noticed that they kept them apart a lot in this match. You got a little play, mm -hmm. but not enough to be like, ah, oh, why teaser. are they keeping them apart? Little, little teaser, little teaser. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going on the record as saying I was 100% wrong about Brian Danielson versus Perry. I thought this match outshined anything I possibly thought it could be. I thought it was going to be mundane. I thought it was going to be at, uh, a little bit mid. If there wasn't Paige versus Strickland and this was the main event for the world title, I would not have been mad. This was a fantastic match. And like them or not, like them or not, Jack Perry is the real deal. <laughs> I love that so, that happened. And so, does, and so do my neighbors outside. Jack Perry is the real deal. I'm, I'm tired of the Jack Perry hatred. Uh, I, I understand he's – no, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Don't be so fast, brother. Don't be so fast. He deserves the hatred, but we have to learn how to separate he was wrong. I've never said anything but that. But that does not take away from his athletic ability and in-ring prowess. So you mistook me. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going a different route with this. Okay. So why does it work for Perry, but it's not working for the Bucks in overall? Because the Bucks are starting to become corny. See, the scapegoat gimmick to me works. This EVP crap is stupid. And that's a very and I admit that's a very simplistic answer, my brother. But that's where it is. That's very it's very elementary to me. It's very on the surface. The Bucks are cornballs right now, and but and, and and Perry's walking around looking like a BA right now. Like he's looking like a, a real deal kind of like heel right now. Yeah, yeah. I I see the tribute to Raven and stuff within the gimmick yeah. too. The what only thing I don't like is that he changed the belt because the belt looks like crap. I also don't like the goat head when he comes. You know what I mean? Some of that stuff, I'm like, lose the goat head. But interesting. Um, after that match, we did see a little ending play out. And we, we can, talk and we can take the graphic down, man. I, I, because we all, everything is in my in my mind right now. Um, yeah, please elaborate on the heel turn, um, even though it wasn't really a heel turn because Moxie is already turn heel. But that. Yeah. So Moxley's been in this weird position of, Assuming you know what he's going to do, him and uh, Marina Shafir, they've been beating people up, walking around in the white tees. So after the match, old Jack's old friend, Luchasaurus, Kill Switch, whatever you want to call him, showed up. And you had this moment of, these guys know each other. They stare at each other like, hey, you, what's up? It's been a while since our feud. Yeah. And here comes Christian. Christian Cage is the best dirt bag ever he came out smiling and he custom made his contract walking out with mother wayne and nick wayne and i was like dude what is going on here then moxley and all them showed up i love it when the music doesn't hit sean it was oh, perfect yeah. he just showed up was like what are you doing yeah just step off this isn't yeah. your moment this isn't your time now they get in the ring they all hug danielson and then there's this uncomfortable feeling you're like, you know Moxley's not a good guy. So you're looking at Moxley like, what's he going to do? Mm -hmm. And while my eyes were on Moxley, Claudio just uppercut Danielson. And Danielson fell back like, yo, what are you doing? What the heck are you doing? He just no-sold in the match. And then Moxley, I didn't peep it until he took it out of his pocket where you could see it. But I didn't peep it until he came down, takes a bag, and I, you, you can figure out the rest of what he did. Uncomfortable. Yeah. This angle was done when me and Sean were kids as well with Terry Funk and Rick. Yes, Lane. there you go. Terry Funk got in huge trouble for doing this. Um, I'm going to save my, my point to this in the end, but what he did was heinous. People were mad. I've heard people say that they were there and they were like, I was so hurt that he did this and people were feeling it. So yeah. interesting, interesting way to do it. And here's the weird thing. Yuta, Pac, and Claudio are the trio's champs. They held Yuta to watch it. Like, they were like, no, you're not interfering in this. It's it's like they took a vote, and that's what happened. 
This is hard, man. This is hard. I mean, are we getting into this now, bro? No, I, I was going to put the other thing. My thing, okay. I'm going to encapsulate it in whole for okay. me, for my arguments. No, I'm looking bit. forward to that. Kind of like the last take on first take. I love it. Um, yeah. Let's address Malik's question. Who do I do? I think that Swerve is a top five African American wrestler of all time. Well, contrary, and I'm not getting into this. The Rock is half black, so I'm putting The Rock in it. Okay, like let's not do that. Okay. Um, so The Rock is obviously the greatest African American professional wrestler of all time. Um, the Junkyard Dog would make my list. Again, all time is a long time, Malik. So, um, and Swerve is still yeah the climbing, the, climbing the ranks. So The Rock, junk, no particular order, but I think these are undi- undoubtedly on the Mount Rushmore plus one of black wrestlers. So The Rock, Junkyard Dog, I would probably go Ahmed Johnson. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was about to hit the war zone <laughs> promo. I'm kidding. Uh, blah, I, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. I'm going to go Ron Simmons. I think Ron Simmons is definitely on that list as the first African-American champion of all time. This is going to be controversial, but I'm really strong in, in, in what I'm about to say. I'm going to add Kofi Kingston to that list. His list of credentials, he's one of the greatest tech part, one half of one, one third of one of the greatest teams of all time, multiple time Intercontinental Champion, multiple time United States Champion, and a world champion. And, you know, so, I mean, that Kofi Kingston, I know is going to get a little bit of backlash, but I'm going with Rock, JYD, Kofi. Who did I say a second ago? Ron Simmons. Ron Simmons. I just need. I, I know the air is the air is dead right now. Good case. No, no. Good. He's making some good cases in here too, though. I I do like that name as well. Malik, you know what? I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna take credit. Malik just gave it to me. Booker T. Booker T. Kong. Like you said, there's a lot though. Like there's a so, lot of people that could go into this. So to answer Malik's question, because Malik actually nullified his question by giving me Booker T. <laughs> but in a good way, in a good way. So no, Swerve does not make my list as of right this very moment as one of the greatest five professional wrestlers that are black of all time. But he is climbing that list. And But I would have to give the nod to JYD, Booker, Rock, Ron Simmons, and Kofi at this particular time. What about you, Conrad? I don't know if I'm ready to do that. Okay. I have to sit and think. I, I'm going to include like names like Kong. I'm just going to mention some different people. Bobo Brazil. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of the first people I remember reading about as a kid when I was looking at like who are some of the first like black world champions. Like I wanted to know Tony Atlas. Yeah, Tony Atlas. Well, Tony. Tony is Tony. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, right. <laughs> Deanna, uh, Deanna, Deanna brings up Mark Henry. That's a good name. Oh, yeah, Mark Henry. Um, I love Kofi Kingston though. I I was not upset when you brought that name up. People okay. can get mad at me. You can say whatever. You can say, "Oh, Kofi didn't deserve it." S- screw that. Kofi Kingston definitely deserved it. Facts. Um, and I'm I'm going back up into this. I want to uh, keep us focused right now. We're making good time right now. E says Danielson can't have a bad match in AEW. Hasn't happened yet. Daniels is the only person I can say that took match of the night from Will Osprey. Him and Swerve. That was a big deal. Um, Dale said Jack Perry was awesome. Um, it's too much Raven with the Jack Perry gimmick. I hear you, Malik Murray. Um, <laughs> e, I can't even read that. Stop it. You are funny. Uh, so I guess Moxley's been trying to get Darby to join BCC, or is he trying to take his title shot from him? Mm. See, when you ask questions and you don't know, it Things makes make it you say, mm. makes it more interesting. Um, Kill switch <laughs> butted the dragon. Yuta unknowing selling was amazing. Yeah, Yuta looked like he had tears in his eyes when they were doing it. That's the end oh, of the he, BCC he, book club. He, he did a great job, by the way. They've been teasing this for a while, too. I hope people have noticed when Danielson came out on Collision and he picked Eddie Kingston to be his partner in yep. that uh, big yep. matchup. Guess what Claudio did? He walked out. Wouldn't your partner, your friends stay in the ring with you? He walked Fast. out. 
Factuals. Uh, just little things to pay attention to. Pack the way he stared at Danielson when they were coming down the ramp together on collision for that tag. Um, yeah, that's the same bag WP gave Tony. Eddie Kingston punching air right now. So I don't know if you know this, Sean, but Eddie Kingston suggested doing this bag storyline many of times to Tony. And I guess it's a joke behind the scenes that it was like, can we do that? No. Um, can we do that? No. Tony has shot this down. They said multiple times, like I would say a few. And they were just like, Kingston's got to be so mad. Listen, I well, don't I'd know. Be what mad, I'd be mad too if something that went, I mean, well, the jur- the thing is, the jury's still out. Like, maybe Kingston shouldn't be too mad yet until we figure out what the public outcry about this is, because maybe it's not as good as we think. I mean, it's the world's talking, but it's not all good talk. Well, well mm, we're we're gonna get into this here to say yeah. Ca- mm-hmm. Captain Planet was crying. Yeah, my boy Yuda was crying. Uh, Eddie kicks it was all right. Give him his flowers. Yeah. I, he's just. I have an idea. I have an idea. Oh my God! Just came to me. This is totally unplanned. What? What if Yuta is not real about feeling sorry for Brian Danielson? That could be the case. Here's the thing. Oh. It's kind. It's kind of like a gang, right? Think about it like this. Yeah. You either do what we tell you to do, or we're going to beat you down too. You don't need to have that trios title. We can not even. You. But not even that. What I'm talking about is taking taking Yuta to another level. Like we need to, uh, I'm thinking like if I, if this is like totally like I want you to, to go through the roof right now. Everything else may not make sense. It doesn't make sense as far as Moxley. It doesn't make sense as far as Castagnoli. It doesn't make any sense as far as Bach. This is strictly if Conrad's asking me, how do you get you to, to another level? It was my idea all along. Wow, that'd be messed up. I would definitely boo you to, if he did that though. <laughs> right, but am old, I right? Am I right? <laughs> Yeah, his old Captain Plan itself. Um, I wanted to highlight some other names here. E had brought up Monty Brown. Love Monty Pouts! Brown. Former Buffalo Bill, baby. Um, yeah, those, are, those are not his best days. Chill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, my quarterback's Daniel Jones. All right, take it easy. Hey, hey. Uh, I always thought The Rock bit uh, Booker T style. Nah, Booker T definitely copied The Rock. Don't hate the player, hate the game, book and They were mm-hmm. telling him to do right. that. Uh, Donnie said, Bad News Brown. I do like Bad News Brown. I'm a big Bad News Brown fan. I thought he deserved better. Um, he did deserve better. McKinney says, it's Shane O'Mac and the ex-WWE guys, it's an evasion angle. Marina's just the hardcore chick that's down with Mox. Yeah, we'll see. Ooh, Rob, one of my favorites. Too Cold Scorpio. I do love me some Too Cold. Everybody, here comes Too Cold Scorpio. Hit my feet. Show my feet. Too, <laughs> um, too Cold. Yeah, now nah, people can't. With that miserable Marcus Bagwell. How you going to make all them kids walk to school? You got a limo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, give me a break, man. I don't want to <laughs> dance to school. <laughs> Nah, people can't see the Easter eggs at AWTV. <laughs> Q- they're too busy looking for QR codes. Come on, E. Get it chill. I agree, Hubs. Yuda is going to turn on Danielson, too. If Yuda's the one uh, that ends Danielson's career, that would be heartbreaking. He said Yuda was like a son to him. Could do it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not your son. That's, that, you call me your son because you don't respect me. Oh, here I'm he sick, goes. I'm sick and tired. No, I'm sick and tired of you people sitting up here calling me Daniel. I, no, I have a father, and Daniel Bryan, and Brian Danielson's not him. Give okay. me the pen. He's yeah, right. Brian, Daniels, Brian Danielson's not my father. And you know something? I'm so sick and tired of people like Moxley and, and, and Castagnoli acting like this was my idea, okay? I never liked Brian Danielson. He always made me sick to my stomach with his ridiculous yes chance and his final countdown. I'm the one who ended. I'm going to end Brian Danielson's career because I'm Wheeler Yuta. Yo, E said rock bit Booker T style. For real, you right, T. Ferg. Booker T was around first. Check the receipts. DDP was the first people's champ, too. Yeah. Uh... He's, easy E is half right. I think DDP caught on the chain. He's 100% right about Booker T. DDP called himself the people's champ first. Rock didn't bite Booker T. Come, you know by the end, Russo was like, yo, you need to be more like Dwayne wearing the shirts. He came out in, like, the gear. Booker no, no, T was- I, you're not wrong. I, and I think E is ha- E is 100% right. Booker T, 
Rock stole a lot from Booker T. I'm simply saying, did DDP call himself the people's champ before The Rock? He might have been. Technically. It was close because I know it was 1998. It was close. Somebody somebody was copying someone. I think Ooh, DDP told a story close. about it. I think I'll have DDP... to go back in the archives and look. Like, was it like did DDP start calling himself the people's champ in '97? Check DDP did an interview about it one time, and he was like, "It was funny that someone called me that." And like a week or two later, Rock was getting called that too. I think De- Deanna's with me. I think it was literally about the same time, almost. Go, yo, after this, when you're bored this week, I want you yeah. to Google DDP talking about it. He said something happened backstage where they were near each other. And someone's uh-huh. like, "Yo, people's champ," and then he said, all of a sudden, it was like, "Okay, okay, okay." So we'll see. You know, I'm sure Rock tells a different story. Back when me and Nick were playing around eating lemon pies in Hawaii. Okay, well, here's, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I think is a deal breaker, bro. For you and the chat, shout out to Deanna. I think Deanna and I are on the same page. Rock was definitely the people's champ at WrestleMania 14. Correct. That's March of 1998. Correct. But DDP also had turned on the NWO by that point. Like he had already diamond cuttered Scott Hall. And I think that's when they started with him. Oh, that's interesting. I gotta look that up. Okay, okay. it's close. Okay. It's close. It's an alfalfa hair close yeah. in that one. Yeah, no doubt. I just said that because I have little rascals on the mind. Yes, <laughs> I had to watch it with the intern. Okay. Um, let's get to the last match here. Uh, Swerve and Hangman. Quick thoughts, Sean. I'm gonna make it real quick because I am on pins and needles to hear your thoughts, and I want you to unleash, my brother. Um. Hangman Adam Page is not just a good wrestler. He's a heck of an actor. Lord have mercy. Um, Swerve has ascended to astronomical heights. I'm so proud and, 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 and just blessed to see this guy perform in this sport. Um, Prince Nana is turning into a national treasure as my brother Conrad does the dance. I will say, I've said it once, I will say it again. There's only one part of this match that I could have done without, and that's the needle. Everything else was masterful storytelling. I I was blown away, but I was blown away kind of in a bad way with the needle. But that's the only complaint I have. That match was as close to perfect as you can get. Are you not a fan of GCW? I'm I'm asking because I know. I am a fan of GCW. I'm cool with it, but see, there's certain arenas for certain things right Mm -hmm. so you think that's like an independent wrestling thing but see when i when i hear unsanctioned though i'm kind of like okay they're gonna do something that they know is like nah you you wouldn't see this any other time so here let's get the needle okay here's the thing and i don't want to go too deep into it the needle can signify so many different things the needle the needle can become like unnecessarily by the way i admit it can bring about so many comparisons and so many newsworthy stories that AEW should not want any part of. The cinder block, that's wrestling. That's hardcore wrestling. The chair shot, that's hardcore wrestling. It was nuts, but it was hardcore wrestling. I'm telling you, my honest to God, Conrad, my honest to God feeling as I was watching that match in real time, it was, and I'm going to go down the list right quick, chair shot. Oh, my God. Um, uh, cinder block. breaker on a cinder block? <laughs> yeah, vertebra was a cinder block. Oh, my God. Oh my god! Oh my god! Needle! Oh my god! It was just. It. I think they wanted you to feel uncomfortable, though. That's a feeling that right. we've lost when we talked about old school pro wrestling. But when yeah. Earthquake sat on that snake, I was uncomfortable as a child. I was mm-hmm. like, "That's not cool." But watching this, I also felt the same way. I felt like that in the segment before we just talked about with Moxley yes. and them. I felt uncomfortable. Right. I'm I'm all right with it. Um, I was more worried about the one the thing we talked about before than this. Like that was more worrisome. Right. That was concerning too. But I'm I'm so interested in getting your full analysis. So Matt brought it up earlier. People watch Chucky right on TV. That's on USA Network. They're swearing, cursing, over the top amounts of blood, whatever gore. When you're watching these shows, we watch pro wrestling and Sean. When you talk to a non-pro wrestling fan, I don't want you to use the F word, but what are some things that you hear from pro wrestling fans when they find out you watch it? Or non-pro wrestling fans, excuse me, when you watch it. What do they say? What do you mean? Like criticisms? They say that it's fake. They say you're a loser. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I said don't say the F word. Oh, sorry. 
Sorry. They say that it's, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you get the idea. They, they make fun of it because they say it's a predetermined product. Right. And they're like, oh, that's phony. It's right. not real, right? Mm-hmm. How does wrestling become real when they do this to you? All of a sudden, right. wrestling's real. And, oh, kids emulate this. Once again, whose job is it to make sure that their kids aren't watching this stuff? I'm not trying to be a jerk, Sean. I'm being honest. Yeah. That's up to you. You say, yo, you ain't watching this match. I can't have you watch this match. This match is crazy. And that's what AEW has told you from the beginning. Like, when we say lights out, it, it's probably going to be lights out. On TV, you got to tame one with Adam Cole and Orange Cassidy. Mm-hmm. But the rest of them, they've been crazy. Moxley, Kenny Omega was crazy. They're using barbed wire. That wasn't crazy. <laughs> Right. Like, right. there's a lot of stuff into it. And I get it. Like, it makes you uncomfortable. Listen, when I saw it, I was like, ah, ah. Like, I'm, I'm like, ah, don't, no. Yeah. Don't. Right. Take it easy. So, yeah. Even broken glass, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Could you imagine? Have you ever stepped on a little piece of glass? I'm like, oh, no. It's, it's horrible. It, it's painful. Awful. Like, that's the stuff where I'm just like, ah. And I guess this leads us to our, our second part of this, where people want to come out. And and listen, the chair shot thing, too, I'll say this. I don't know how the magic is done with these, Sean. I don't know how people put this all together uh, with with chair shots, staple guns, and how they, they – I'm sure the staple gun actually probably isn't as bad as we think it is, as long as you know it's coming. You it's bad enough. It. I mean, you're still stapling your flesh. Good Lord. When I went to school, did you ever have people – so you remember the boards where they would, like, staple around it? Like, it's St. Patrick's Day, blah, blah, blah. Of course. I used to know kids who would take those staples out, straighten them, and then put them through their skin. Why would they do this? I have zero clue. I don't know. I never did that. But I'm like, why do you do this? And they're like, I don't know. It looks cool. Uh, it's all in my fingers. And right, I'm just like right. – and they couldn't feel it. I can't tell you why people do this stuff. It, well, it's I not mean, If they- you went to wrestling school the first day, they're like, Sean – all right, here we go. What do you do with a staple gun? Ah, time to learn about hardcore matches. I'm out, bro. That would be the day where I'm like, I'm out. I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm turning into Okada real quick. Absolutely. Only only bleeding I'm in favor of in wrestling is the bleeding that's like done on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Better controlled than hard mm-hmm. way, in my opinion. Um, The chair shot, like I said, I, I don't condone doing that, like taking chair shots to the head. The chair I shot was comfortable the- too. I'm hoping the chair might have been fixed, though. 100% was. But I don't know how they do it. It's still a chair shot. Like, mm-hmm. as far as I know, whatever. I Listen, AEW can can get some of that stuff, too. They can be criticized. Would you? Would we have done all these things? Maybe, maybe not. But here's the thing. Oh, by the way, I did have that up for Eddie Kingston where he uh, was uh, pretty upset about what they did. These were my ideas. <laughs> like, take it easy. All right. Right. But with with AEW in a total, here's the thing. I think they gave you two different shows, Sean. Number one, I didn't see any crowd pictures that night. Anyone else? Woo-hoo! Crowd pictures? Oh. Hey, yo, talk your talk, Conrad. Oh, I just was wondering where I, where those were from. All the talk your talk, Conrad. Now I'm going to bring up this. I'm going to credit, once again, my same boys, J.D. and Mike, over on Voices of Wrestling. They had a great title. I had to tell them a great title today. AEW All In was for the sponsors. AEW All Out was for the sickos. It was a tale. One is a story of redemption and proud, and the other one is a tragedy. Look at this. It is a tragedy of a show. Beatings all the way around. And I like that it was like that. If they were going to show a sponsor, well, what do you guys do? I'm showing them all in. Like, yeah, this is what we do. Grand entrance. It's a spectacle. Correct. But when you want to show a hardcore wrestling fan, what do we do? Oh, we're going to do things that WWE can't do because we kept hearing they're not an alternative anymore. Exactly. Can WWE have hardcore women's matches? Can WWE do pile drivers? Can WWE do bag spots? Can WWE do things that will make you uncomfortable in a match that they said was unsanctioned? Touche. You ask for them to be different? Don't get mad because you got it now. Well, um, I just want to be clear. Not that you're talking about me per se, but I did – I just want to go on record. I love the match. Only thing I only thing that I felt like was just too like too much was the needle. Everything else I thought was amazing. I 
thought I thought the for the record, I thought the needle spot was amazing, but I was just kind of like <laughs> Matt Matt must have heard me on the review too. I said this on our review. Uh as a deathmatch fan, the needle is not the worst thing I've seen done in deathmatch wrestling. No, it's actually tame. Not some of close. the other things I've not seen. Um we call this Din's fire around these parts, Conrad. BJ says, I have a question. If the needle spot wasn't to press through, but to say hangman numb swerved, which led to the chair shot, is it better or worse uh, than trying to stab through? I felt like it, he was trying to go through so that it was like, oh, look, look what we did. Because once again, that probably wouldn't hurt as bad. But I don't know. I, I just don't think it worked out fully. And then you could have it be whatever. You don't even have to explain yourself at this point with it. Touche. That, that's how I view it, Beach. Um, Rob says, you guys don't remember that great story about The Rock backstage at Raw in Louisville with Muhammad Ali and his wife? Here we go. And he gave the moniker to Rocky Maivia for all of the people. Yeah, this is where Rock gets in trouble telling them stories. Um, that, you know, that was one of the most <laughs> phoniest, like, I'm even as the words were spewing out of his mouth, I was like, this is just not true. Like, I mean, there's no way God rest his soul we could ever ask Ali about it, but I don't believe that for one second. Can't. Can't, bro. <laughs> you just can't. Eddie Kingston is about to come back to TV with the flaming branding iron. Yeah, he's about to come back on his Terry Funk. Like, yo, y'all letting me do something. All in was pu- Puppy Paw Patrol and all out was the crow. <laughs> Y'all got it too. Uh, if the needle wouldn't have been in the Texas death match, I wouldn't have had a problem, but it didn't fit this match. Burnt wood, yes. Staples, yes. Cinder blocks, tables turn, but that, ugh. Um, I, like I said, it, here's the other thing. If you're a WWE fan and you're saying this stuff, don't ask for WWE to go back to how they used to be. No right. more. Like, right. if you if you people can't handle this, it should be PG. And, Sean, let's get to the fake people that we were talking about. I think I sent you both. If not, there were two people today that I saw. Mm-hmm. We need to band together so AEW doesn't get a television. A bunch of crap. If you are a fan of pro wrestling, you don't talk like that. You don't say, like, I want you to not get your television deal. This is the same thing they did when Nick Gage wrestled Chris Jericho. How could you have a pizza slicer on air during a Domino's commercial? And they went and told advertisers. Allegedly, let me say that. These are good people. Though. These are good people, though, right, Sean? They would never. They're certainly not looking out for the betterment of the business. They would never do anything to harm someone, would they? Woo-hoo! Would they? Woo-hoo! For the benefit of those listening on audio, Conrad subliminally. Flashes the Saturday night, WWE Saturday night, uh, WWE Saturday's made event sign, which is obviously a reference to the fact that WWE is going to go up against AEW on the same night in the same town because they are petty jackasses. It's not confirmed yet, but I think that they're going to announce the first show that Saturday that World's End is happening and they're going to be in Florida as well. Yep. Now, not, ju- not just Florida, show. not just Florida, right down the street, right down the street. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Not saying that you can't run a business, but too many kawinky dinks for my liking. <laughs> just putting it out there. So, yeah, don't be one of those fake fans that comes on there and starts crying about, Ma, I have children and I'm a mother. Beat it. I don't care about none of that stuff. That's like the same people yelling about Marshawn Lynch coaching my kid. Well, then pull your kid out then. Like, what do you want me to tell you? He's going to do what he's going to do. He's in the NFL. You're not. You know what I'm saying? By the way, I just want to let everybody know that when my mother named me Sean, it's because I'm named after Sir Sean the fifth of Great Britain. I am the fourth descendant of the king of West Zamunda. And... It's because of that that my mother named me Sean. Okay. All right. No, I'm saying we're talking about the re- like this is the same the same like just like Rock talking about how he's the people's champ. I'm Sean because I am a fourth descendant of royalty and I just want to let you guys know that that movie, that movie coming to America was based off the uh the, the history of my family. Hey, 
when it's on your Wikipedia, don't, don't say a word one day. Eddie Murphy in that movie is actually the likeness of my great great grandfather, Prince Hafi the First. <laughs> Shotzi and me and you can do topes to the stack chairs at NXT. Take that, hardcore fans. CM Punk Collision ripoff, but I heard AW wasn't competition. You beat our developmental. Wow. Funny how it changes, right? It changes. That's not our development. That's a third brand. They don't know what they want to be. They're the third brand one is beneficial for them, and they're de- developmental when it's beneficial for them. I thought it was because you're the next iteration of Canelo Alvarez. Saul. <laughs> I was listening until you said Zumunda. He, he well, had you for a second, right? He had for, me too. For, for Dwayne Johnson to fix his lips, to tell the world, I don't know why we haven't talked about this before, to say that the late, great Muhammad Ali gave him the moniker People's Champ? Do you understand how comical that is? Well, he's a heel now too, so I give he gets a little leeway with it. Oh man, I thought that story was supposed to be real. I thought he was trying to make it seem like no, no, no. He was trying to make it seem like there's no way that was a heel promo. That was not a heel promo. It was 100 percent trying to make people believe because they got them they got the wife involved. God bless her. They got the wife involved. Sean, he's carrying around a belt that he made for himself. Are you kidding me? (laughs) That's ridiculous. Like Dwayne. Like Dwayne. Really? Dwayne. But it's supposed to be so over the top that you don't believe it. You know what I mean? Um, It's it's what it is with some of this stuff. And like I said, we'll see if Saturday night's main event. If that happens, I just want y'all to come on Twitter, tag me and Sean, and just say, man, how'd you guys know that? How'd you figure that they were going to do Saturday night's main event? We'll see if it happens. Uh, and in our last bit of breaking news for the day, from Russell Pura, Sean, uh, we got this. This is from Fightful Select. Take Our it school. away. Here we go. There was or there has been discussion backstage within TV world that select AEW content could be headed to Fox slash Tubi or Tubi. How do you say it? Tubi? Tubi, right? Tubi. Okay, cool. After the AEW Shockwave trademark emerged... There was internal speculation in both worlds that a new promotion or new program, excuse me, would be headed to the Fox family of networks, whether it be Fox itself, Tubi, FS1, or anywhere else. Oh, boy. Hmm. Didn't think they had any other choices, huh? Oh, man, I thought all that stuff was going to destroy them today after we complained about it. Boo-hoo. Looks like they're making moves without WBD. Might be smart. What do you think? What say you, Sean? Smart, crafty, whatever word you want to come up with. Uh, you know, it's it's something. It's something. Listen, I got to ask you a question, Conrad, because I'm always the one who like is up on this soapbox. I want you to address, because I know how I feel about the comment that McKinney – just put in our chat. I, I was want, hoping. I want you, before I lose my crap, I want you to respond because everybody's going to say, Sean, you're on your Jay Uso stuff again. No. Conrad, please. I will, matter of fact, I will do you the service of reading it, and I want you to respond. McKinney, one of our best listeners, says, the magic don't meaning the NBA's basketball magic. The magic don't complain when the Heat play at the same time. It's competition. Burger King is always across the street from McDonald's. So it's always going to look petty. Oh my. Conrad, what say you? It doesn't look petty. It is petty. The Magic and Heat both work for the NBA. There is not a national governing body of pro wrestling. These guys are predators when it comes to business. They are trying to take them out. Now, what Sean said is not wrong. What he said, so me and Sean talked about the whole spot thing with the the needle in the bag. We're just going to call it that for right now. Sean's not wrong because I told Sean, as a fan, I don't care. Mm-hmm. As a business person, PR guy, uh, mm-hmm. they're going to use this against you. They're going to try to, and they are. They weaponize these fools 
who have keyboards called Twitter and whatever social media form you have, mm -hmm. and they're going to use it. Some of these people are stupid, and you need to tell them that they're being stupid. There's AEW fans who are stupid every single week that I see it. I'm like, please stop spouting this garbage. CM mm -hmm. Punk is gone. Stop being stupid. Now, I want to go back to this. CM Punk's probably the only person who I'm, I know what his grudge is against AEW, and I get it. Mm -hmm. I told him they tried to ruin your name when you came back. I understand. Cody, he probably has a grudge too. We don't know what it is, but whatever. Now, I want to say this. Why do you feel it's okay that anytime AEW goes somewhere that you have to follow it? Did WrestleMania really need to be in Las Vegas this year? Absolutely Why did you not. screw the good people of Minnesota out? You could have had Jesse Ventura host it. There's no Ubers there. BS. Come on, dog. People would have found a way that people probably have cars if there's no Ubers there, just like here in Buffalo. You, yeah. Most people have cars. You don't need Uber. But if you needed to get to the stadium, I'm sure your, a friend would give you a ride or whatever. It's not or like lift. you have to jump in your Flintstone car and pump your feet to get there. <laughs> I wish I had a sound effect right now for you. <laughs> but well, <my> <laughs> I just don't get it, man. I just don't get it. Like they followed them. So WrestleMania is now going to be in Las Vegas and double or nothing happens in Vegas. And it's just a month away. They're trying to do it. Now, if I'm AEW, I'm counter moving. I know E may not feel the same about this. We've, we've had discussions. You got to go to Atlantic City. You got to bounce up out of your, your destination. Oh, exactly. It's over because they're going to hunt you down. Now they're trying to get you because they're like, we're on top. Make them. They're using TNA, bro. I keep telling people this. No one listens. They think I'm just some conspiracy dude. This is not made up. WWF used ECW as a warfare toy to go against the WCW. That's why the Mike Austin bid happened. Yeah, fight each other. Fight each other. Because ECW can never have enough money to compete with me. You have enough money to compete with me, but now I got you distracted by them because we're pushing you down. That's a and, fact. We're and we're helping boost them up because they want to be number two so badly. They're playing you. Stop like, letting these like people fiddle, play you. Like a fiddle they're playing you. Me and Sean just watched this long enough, and I've watched it for too long that I've seen this game before, and I know how it gets played. TNA thinks it's all good and gravy right now. It, it's fine. Jordan Grace is gone. Joe Hendry is gone. When them contracts come up, he's going to say his name, and he appears on CW on Tuesdays. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. And, and let me piggyback off of Conrad's point. And shame on you, uh, uh, TNA, if you think anything but that is going on. But, you know, I got to hear, AEW did nothing for them. They, did, they didn't give you your biggest rating with Kenny. They gave you Kenny Omega, the world champ. The That's world like champ. The WWE champ. WWE has not done that. WWE. Meanwhile, Ethan Page ain't even showing up on your show. Come on, player. Come on, bro. Come on. Uh, McKinney comes back. He says, but be, but, be, but be careful, Conrad. If we tell the truth, we're knocking WWE again. Yeah, I'm just saying, get what you're gonna get, bro. Tubi said they wanted a wrestling, uh, they wanted wrestling, but it's a Fox brand. WWE already cut ties, so it's a perfect fit. AEW should totally pursue the deal. Nothing wrong with that, McKinney. I agree. Um, if if Fox wants wrestling, we're listening. If Amazon Prime wants wrestling, go listen. I who knows what's gonna happen with WBD in five years. I heard Paramount was interested too. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want I don't want AEW on Fox because I'm afraid of what it would do to their product. That's true. I, I'm a little worried. I mean, I mean, God bless. I want them to win, but if you go to Fox, there's a lot of things that have to change. Well, they'll be blacking out a lot of things and censoring crowd chants. Mm -hmm. oh, for I don't sure. Know. I don't know. That's just you know. But maybe Tony's got a better relationship. He also does work with them. True. You like those Jaguar games? MLW was supposed to get a 2B show. WWE acts that MLW sue and WWE won. Also, not there's multiple reasons why they're helping TNA. Now nah, we're good boys now. We don't play like that anymore. Yeah. Right. Can't we can't buy anyone for five years until we need them. T Ferg says, with WWE having different eras, do you guys think AEW is entering its second generation era in a few years? Punk and Cody are gone. Danielson, Omega, and Jericho are close to retirement. It's a good point. It's a good point for I think I see what you're saying. I understand the point. And it could be, it could be like the next generation of AEW. Right. Uh Guy Will Gamble says this has been WWS play since AWA and the Starcade play. 
thousand percent guy will gamble. As much as Ric Flair wanted to tell everybody, there's nothing else going on. Oh, yeah, there was something going on, all right? It's called the Survivor Series, and half of you guys are not going to be able to see Starcade because Gomez has told the cable companies not to air Crockett's product. Right. TNA needs something else. TNA's owners have to be willing to give it up on their channel as well. I can see them on like a CBS Sports, one of those smaller ones. Yeah. Tubi has rated our movie, so it's like cable. AEW won't get blacked out for content. Interesting. Right. Uh, Ethan Page. Malik is not a fan of Ethan Page, it sounds like. MLW won. WWE admitted in court that the demo god Rio beat them in the ratings, too. <laughs> Chill. Shockwave could be on True TV, which is under Warner and changing to TNT Sports. Could be. Could be. There's a lot of hope with these things. Um, Sean, let's run down Raw real quick, what we got tonight. Yeah, I'm running five down, right? Guess who's back? Guess who's back again oh, since man. since TNA went live? Brett the Hitman <laughs> Hart is back. <laughs> I'm walking here. I'm walking here. <laughs> He's back. I'm walking here. I'm sure Punk had to convince him. Please don't get mad. Uh, I've heard rumors that he might be involved. That's the Brett we know. <laughs> in the, oh, in the look, at that, look at that handsome... Young man, that's WWF circa 1992 right there. Woo! You know something, Walter Gunther? <laughs> in the, you know, I, I was like, in the SummerSlam. <laughs> why is it? Why is it? <laughs> We're going, Davy Boy Smith, you think you're going to beat me in the SummerSlam? Well, Brett, it's, it's SummerSlam. It's the SummerSlam. Don't get mad at me, Sean, for this one. We got a number one contendership Ouch. for the Intercontinental title. I think I have my prediction for who's going to win. I guarantee, I guarantee Jay Uso wins this match. I guarantee if this was on FanDuel, I would bet my house. Jay Uso is going to win this match, and then he is going to move on to lose to Braun Breaker because Triple H is a no good. All right. All right. I got to stop you. I think him and Sammy are both about to uh, tag up, show why they have to unite together. Mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. We know. Um, for my man Quills, wherever he is in the house, <laughs> rematches are weekly. Uh, we have the tag team title rematch happening once again for the past few shows. Bianca and Jade are on Monday Night Raw. Mm. Yo, you see Easy E? He's like, listen, my name is Brett the Hitman Hart, and I'm here in the WCW. <laughs> <laughs> he always did that. Look, I'm going to the Starcade. Like, Brett, what are you talking about, man? He said he, said he calls the Simpsons Simpsons. <laughs> right, the thing. Supposed to say that he, he takes it away. Listen, I'm gonna be on Cosby show this week. <laughs> <laughs> BJ said Bronson Reed needs to do that tsunami on Oh bread. no, oh boy. Quills, Quills came in right on time. Rematches always weekly. <laughs> uh meet us right here next week on Clash of the Podcast. On the Clash of the Podcast. Actually, our name works either way. See, there you go. Punk didn't have to beg Brett. Punk and FTR Punk and FTR got Brett that Legends deal bag, uh, talking about him in AEW. He deserves it. Brett yeah. deserves a Legends deal. Uh, and what I think might close the show, opening, we have the opening. opening oh, they already announced per, it? As per uh, Adam Pierce? TikTok, yep. Oh, okay. I, I missed that. See? This is mm -hmm. why Sean's here, folks. Keep me on my toes. I'm here to make sure that I add a little levity to your uh, expertise, my brother. Or my foolishness, whichever you guys <laughs> Uh The Wyatt Six, I, I feel like the, Gable and them have to win this, right? I I mean, they've lost everything so far. If this is going to be any kind of rivalry, they have to win. Touche. Touche. Um, that's raw for you guys. It starts at three minutes. Sean, take us out of here, and we can uh, end things right. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. It's always a pleasure to have this amazing chat in here with us as Conrad and I bring you Clash of the Podcast. Um, we're going to be right back here every Monday night. We have a programming note, a very special programming note. It is a ways down the line, but we want to put you guys on and let you guys know that because 
we have so much respect and appreciation for you guys as our viewers and listeners that we, though, could end our amazing streak of weekly episodic shows. We are not going to. So for the first time ever on Tuesday, oh, my gosh, I forgot to look up the date. 29th. Tuesday, October 29th. That's why you're here, Conrad. Tuesday, October 29th. We are going to be doing a special Tuesday edition of Clash of the Podcast because on Monday I will be on my way back to New York. We do not want to rush the show, so we want to make sure we give you our best effort. So remember, on Tuesday, October 29th, Clash of the Podcast, Tuesday Clash Tuesday on the 29th of October. So just make a mental note of that. We'll remind you, obviously, as it gets closer. Conrad, I appreciate you, my brother. Chat, we appreciate you. Make sure you look out for that uh, Steel Cage Hubonomics. Conrad and I are going to be working on that the Thursday before. I think it's going to be the Thursday before Wrestle Dream. Not the Thursday before Bad Bud, but the Thursday before Wrestle Dream, we're going to come to you on the Hubbard Wrestling Weekly channel for a special edition of Clash of the Podcast, a.k.a. Hubonomics. But until next week, 6.05 Eastern Standard Time, normal time, Monday night, I am Sean Hubbard. He is Conrad Cushman. We are Clash of the Podcast. God is good. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Evil never prevails.